Rumors have suggested for a while that Apple's mini iPhone, which first came on the scene with 2020's iPhone 12 mini, won't be long for this world. Although Apple followed up the release with the device that addressed the key issue of battery life, it's possible that the iPhone 13 mini will be the last mini iPhone that we'll see. That's unfortunate because the iPhone 13 mini is my favorite Apple smartphone of all time. In this episode of The Rewind, I'll discuss why as we look back at the iPhone 13 mini. Mini. But first, a brief word from our sponsor. iMazing is the Swiss Army knife for iOS device management for Mac and Windows. Use it to make Time Machine style wireless backups and easily transfer documents, media, and content. Explore system files, access device and battery diagnostics, and more. All of your data stays local on your computer or the drive of your choice. And backups can be encrypted for maximum privacy. With iMazing, you can dig into your iPhone's backup history, browse your photo library without syncing, and export multiple versions. You can even even save and export WhatsApp chats and iOS messages. And it's all ready for Apple's latest software and hardware. It's no wonder why iMazing is the most popular all-purpose iPhone and iPad manager for Mac and PC. For a limited time, get 30% off iMazing by clicking the link in the description. Special thanks to iMazing for sponsoring 9to5Mac. Welcome to The Rewind. Another look at the iPhone 13 mini. As I've stated many times in the past, iPhone 4 era design with its flat edges was my favorite iPhone design ever up until last year's release of the iPhone 12 mini. With that release, Apple perfected an already great design by removing the home button in favor of what roughly amounts to an edge-to-edge -edge display. By adopting swipe gestures for navigation and Face ID authentication, Apple was able to delete the home button, giving way to a much larger display than we had with the 3.5 and 4-inch displays found in the iPhone 4 and iPhone 5 respectively. The iPhone 13 mini features a comparatively massive 5.4-inch display yet it's placed inside a chassis that's only 0.31 inches taller and 0.22 inches wider than the iPhone 5. Remember how massive the screen on the iPhone 6 Plus felt the first time you used it? Well, the iPhone 13 mini's display is only 0.1 inches smaller than the iPhone 6 Plus, but it features a significantly smaller footprint. If the iPhone 13 mini would have launched around the same time as the iPhone 6 Plus, its design would have been downright mind-boggling. But what really makes this smartphone so great is its handheld usability. I can easily navigate around iOS with just one hand and finger fatigue is much less of an issue than it is with larger phones. It's also easier to store in a jeans pocket and looks better than its siblings when made it with accessories like the MagSafe battery pack and the iPhone leather wallet. While it doesn't feature the lofty battery life pro camera features and display improvements of its bigger brother, the iPhone 13 mini is the pin of iPhone design if you ask me. When you combine its proportions, materials, and user experience, it simply doesn't get any better than this. The iPhone 13 mini features 800 nits max brightness typical, which is a decent improvement over the iPhone 12 mini 625 nits max brightness. That results in a device that's a little bit easier to use while in bright conditions like outdoors. But this is definitely one area where the iPhone 13 Pro models separate themselves from the baseline models like the iPhone 13 mini. The 13 Pro features significantly higher typical brightness of 1000 nits, and more importantly, it ushers in Pro Motion support to the iPhone for the first time. Of course, ProMotion, which first debuted with the iPad Pro, brings variable refresh rate technology to the iPhone and makes it possible to enjoy 120Hz refresh rate for smoother scrolling and improved text rendering while scrolling. ProMotion is one of the key features that really had me strongly considering going with the iPhone 13 Pro as my daily driver, but I ultimately decided that I valued the portability of the iPhone 13 mini just a bit more. Last year, I came close to making the iPhone 12 mini my main device, but the battery life just wasn't quite good enough to make that happen. This year, Apple addressed the battery life issue on its smaller iPhone, and although it won't compare to the ridiculously long-lasting Max model, the 13 mini improves just enough for me to usually get through a full day's usage. On most evenings, I end up with like 10 to 15% battery life remaining, although on occasion, I've had to top it off to make it through a full day. With the iPhone 12 mini, I almost never made it through a full day without needing to recharge, so it's definitely 
definitely an improvement in that area. With that being said, I've grown accustomed to keeping the MagSafe battery pack around to help me get through days where battery life might be an issue. And I've been pretty happy with the performance. As I noted in my hands-on review of the MagSafe battery pack, this is a device that works with all MagSafe enabled iPhones, but seems to have been specifically designed with the iPhone 13 mini in mind. The iPhone 13 mini comes with 128 gigabytes of storage, meaning Apple has doubled the storage of its baseline devices while charging the same $699 price. In today's age, 64 gigabytes of storage in a smartphone is doable, but having 128 gigabytes in the base model is a big win for customers and enough storage for the average user. MagSafe is probably the best smartphone accessory lineup that we've seen since smartphones became mainstream with the original iPhone. Here's hoping that Apple continues to build on the capability of this easy to use accessory interface. Besides my MagSafe enabled iPhone leather case, my second most used MagSafe accessory is the iPhone leather wallet. The leather wallet conveniently attaches magnetically to the back of the iPhone 13 or to the back of a MagSafe enabled case. I find it super convenient to keep up with a few cards that I need to take with me while on the go and Apple recently improved Improve the leather wallet by adding Find My support so that you can track it in the Find My app if it's ever lost or misplaced. The aforementioned MagSafe battery pack, of course, is an accessory I use here and there when necessary. If I'm going out and I realize that my iPhone 13 mini is low on battery, I'll just slap it on to give it a boost. At $99, the MagSafe battery pack probably should cost about half of what it does, but you can't top its ease of use in its iOS integration. A couple of additional MagSafe enabled products that I use sparingly are the MagSafe Duo, which I've relegated to only using while traveling, and the Moment multi-threaded mount for MagSafe. And I know that's a mouthful, but Moment's accessory is particularly intriguing in that it provides a quick and easy way to mount your iPhone to a camera rig, which is great when using your iPhone for functions like monitoring or camera control. I love this little guy. All iPhone models get Apple's latest and greatest A15 system on a chip. From the cheapest iPhone 13 mini to the most expensive iPhone 13 Pro Max, you more or less get the same type of performance across the board. Granted, on the Pro models, you do get additional memory and you also get better GPU performance with more cores, but the CPU performance of the iPhone 13 mini will closely resemble the CPU performance of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. With this in mind, the iPhone 13 mini proves to be a great value. You're getting latest generation performance in a package that costs hundreds less than the top of the line iPhone 13 Pro Max. The iPhone 13 mini's redesigned dual camera system is nothing to sneeze at as it improves on an already competent setup found in the iPhone 12 mini. Both cameras are new and improved when compared to the year ago model with the wide angle shooter featuring a bigger sensor with larger pixels for improved light gathering and the ultra wide camera comes equipped with a faster sensor for better low light performance. Another noteworthy improvement is sensor shift optical image stabilization support support for the wide-angle camera, a feature that was previously exclusive to last year's Pro model. Sensor shift is also geared towards helping improve low-light photography and speeds up night mode capture by helping to keep the camera stabilized while shooting handheld. Of course, there are added software improvements like cinematic mode, which brings rack focus video capability to the masses in photographic styles to add in-camera personalized looks based on tone and warmth adjustments. Unsurprisingly, the camera cameras make for the biggest differentiator between the iPhone 13 Pro and the baseline iPhone 13. The Pro version includes a telephoto lens along with professional features like Apple Pro RAW capture for photos, ProRes capture for videos, macro support for videos and photos, improved night mode performance, etc. Perhaps most notably, the iPhone 13 Pro features a faster aperture for better low light capture in both its wide and ultra wide cameras. There's no question that you sacrifice sacrifice several noteworthy camera enhancements by skipping out on the Pro models, but the iPhone 13 mini features a solid camera system that's capable of taking fantastic looking photos and videos, and I've been very happy with it. With the iPhone 13 mini, you don't get the awesome pro camera features and you don't get the larger and brighter display with a variable refresh rate. However, you get a device that's much more accommodating to the hands and fingers with a design that looks much better proportionally speaking than larger iPhone models. The iPhone 13 mini starts at a reasonable $699, comes with 128 gigabytes of storage, features Apple's latest A15 chip, and does a decent job of addressing the battery life issues from the previous 
previous year. The iPhone 13 mini is not the most feature dense Apple smartphone that you can buy today, but it's the best looking iPhone and feels the best in the hand when using it. Unfortunately, if you're an iPhone mini fan, you better remember how this feels because it's probably not going to be this way for long. Chances are that this is the last year of the iPhone mini based on rumors, which is sad, but not all that surprising. If the iPhone 13 mini does turn out to be the last mini iPhone in Apple's lineup, I can say that I enjoyed it to the full. What do you think about the iPhone 13 mini? Would you be disappointed if we don't see an iPhone 14 mini? Sound off down below in the comments with your thoughts and thanks for watching. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Special thanks to iMazing for sponsoring 9to5Mac. iMazing is made by Apple fans and it's already fully compatible with iOS 15, iPadOS 15, and it's ready for macOS Monterey. Use it to do things like easily transfer music and videos to your devices or download and install iOS apps and manage an app library right on your desktop. Click the link in the description to get 30% off iMazing for a limited time.